folks, how are you all doing? Today I thought we could talk about Billy Strings and Marcus Kane playing Summertime. Super cool tune, George Gershwin tune, Porgy and Bess. History, history, history. Um, is that really the name of the play? I think it is. In any case, you just heard me play Billy Strings' break from that recording. You can get that tab and the sheet music for free at LessonsWithMarcel.com. That's my website. We have a bunch of other free transcriptions on there. If that's all you need, go get it. Good, we're fine. I'll see you later. Uh, if you want a little more instruction, we're gonna talk through all of Billy's break today as well. And that means talking about a couple techniques and then doing like a big breakdown, showing you the break with the tab up above. If you've watched me before, you know how I do. And since you know how I do, let's jump into some techniques real quick. Let's see, what's Billy used to play this break? So the first thing that we have to talk about in almost all of these videos is our bone structure. So sort of how the person is viewing the fretboard, how they're getting around, and how they're seeing, you know, boxes or scale shapes, what have you. In this case, I think it's three E minor pentatonic scale shapes that Billy's using and seeing particularly, and that's box one, box three, and box four. Um, I want you to practice them real quick. I'm gonna play them for you and show the tab up above. Go ahead, take a look, take a listen, take a practice. Gotta find a guitar pick. Oh, yep, that's one. Now that you know those three boxes, we should probably talk about how Billy Strings moves diagonally. Because he also uses this diagonal pentatonic shape. So let's take a look at that now. That diagonal shape always makes me think of uh, Billy's an up to leave break, I think. Next up we have this harmonic scale. Uh, and Billy uses this E minor harmonic scale or G major harmonic scale. Um, and it's kind of the same scale that we've talked about before. It's in Sierra Holes, um, Unfamiliar Times. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video and you'll see the same uh, harmonic pentatonic scale. Anyway, here it is. All right, so there's still one more thing I want you to do. I want you to listen to me play the break again. And with your ears, I want you to try to hear those different pentatonic boxes, maybe some of those diagonal scales. See if you can hear the moment when he uses that harmonic scale. The reason I bring this stuff up is that if you ever want to figure out breaks like this again on your own, you have to be able to recognize these things. So I would be a bad teacher if I didn't encourage you to try to hear these things yourself, because these things are some of the ways that I figured out this break. You know, I know these shapes, I know the diagonal shape, I know how to play my E minor, harm <laughs> a E minor pentatonic scale with harmonics, so listen for these, I promise, it's useful. And with all of that good stuff out of the way, let's go to this big boy breakdown. Now I actually recorded this a couple days ago um, and I had a bunch of corrupted footage. <laughs> so I managed to salvage this from the previous recording. So please enjoy that. So in the very beginning, you will see a chord and this chord is coming in off the beat and it's got this little wiggly line. It's because I want you to strum through the chord. I don't want you to just push through all at once. I want you to kind of give me time on every single note. And it'll sound like the very first line of the song. Of course, that 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 rake through motion uh, feels a little bit faster when he's playing it at speed, but that is what's happening. And after that happens, there's a little bit of an odd amount of time. Just now when I played it along with Billy, um, I actually counted that amount of time. And, and I basically counted two, three, four, and then one, two of the next measure. I'll show you what I mean. It sounds like this. 
two, three, four, one, two. Right, so I'm counting two, three, four, one, two, and then I know I can start the next line. So, two, three, four, one, two. If you want to get into counting and you want to learn some more of this, I'm not going to teach you how to count in this video because that is its own can of worms. I really do think you should know how to count though. Um, you might want to check out my video dedicated to that. It's about how counting can fix your pick strokes too. So <laughs> let's keep going on this one. The next line that happens here is a triplet pull off. So I'm using my pinky, my middle finger, and my index finger. And I'm playing that pull off really quick. And if you're thinking about this timing wise too, Billy actually butts this up really close uh, right after B2. So you remember I'm counting two, three, four, one, two. It's really close after I feel B2 that I play this. One, two. He just, he hops right in after there. One, two. Um, so it's not, it's not perfectly, you know, like one eighth note rest and then the, the triplet pull off. He gets in there real quick. So if you want to copy that, you can. Just something I noticed. So after that pickup, we have two triplets. The pickup, ba-da-da, this quick pull off, ba-da-da, triple la triple la. If you haven't noticed, this is all box for the pentatonic, one of the shapes that I showed you. Except for that one note, I guess. It's including some other notes from the major scale. It's a little more diatonic, but it's still that same shape. It's the same framework, if you will. Right, pick up, triple a, triple a. Work that line a bunch. It's all index, middle, pinky. I bet you can do it. This next measure starts with a pull off. It's gonna be pinky to middle, still the same fingers. The hammer on right here is index finger to middle, same fingers. I'm actually not sure how much I hear of that note. It sounds like it might be more just the B string, but I included that that G note bar just to just in case anyone else heard it like me. Uh, we're sliding up. So here's an interesting one. When I play this, I'm uh, I don't have any other fingers to use, so I'm using the same fingers for the slide up. That's my ring back to index, and then I use index again and ring here. I think it makes. It makes this note particularly short because I have to jump over here to play that. It's kind of a nice little phrasing thing. Uh, that's the first line. Let's move on to the next line. So in this line, I'm still hearing that note continue ringing. This note is still ringing and I'm starting the next line. And I have another one of these chords. This one, I think he plays even slower. And if you want to know its beat placement, it's really late on the beat. He's really late. He's almost late getting to beat three at the start of that quarter note triplet because he's being so dramatic, pushing through all these chord tones. So this is why I didn't use the rake notation. Instead, I used uh, a 16th note triplet so you can see the chord being strummed very slowly. And that's just all downstrokes, by the way. For you bluegrass musicians, that might be a little bit tough because you're used to things off the beat being upstrokes. This is like that slow rake um, and it has to be a downstroke. In fact, I didn't write any of the pick strokes in this break because they're a little messy. They have less to do with where things land on the beat um, because it's not a bluegrass tune. Anyway, let's continue. This is another pickup. -da 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 -da. And that quarter note triplet is really interesting to feel. Da, 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 da. Three, four. One, two, da, ba, da, 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 da. Two, three, four. Two, da, 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 two, three, four. Hopefully you can hear that. It's uh, three over two is an interesting thing to describe. I don't want to get too into the weeds. Just like I said, counting is its own beast. So we're not going there today. After I play that quarter note triplet and the next measure, I have a whole beat or a whole measure plus one beat. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. Whoops. No one's perfect. Let's try it again. 
two, three, four, one. That's the idea. Now you will probably notice that we're still in box four of the Pentatonic. This is part of that, uh, that diagonal shape that I showed you earlier. These are some of those notes. <laughs> so this is one of the first hints that we've seen of that. Another chord note triplet, bum, bum, bum. And then uh, we're, we're bending up, so it sounds like eighth fret. Nope, nope, there we go. Um, and then we're just letting it down. So pre-bending up to eight and then letting it down. If you can tell, I can't get it perfectly in tune. I'm not very good at that. Um, Billy's actually sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty in tune. Uh, don't crucify me for that. What can I do? Um, next up, in the next measure, we have all of those uh, harmonics. So we talked about this G major harmonic scale. Um, I wish I could remember how Sierra Hole uses it, um, but it's something like this. Something like that. If you watch that video, you can see me play it much better, but... There's the pentatonic line that's very similar to Billy's right here. So Billy's playing, um, instead of, you know, skipping back and forth between strings like I wrote it in the original uh, scale sheet that I gave you, um, Billy's just playing it straight through all the strings. 7, 12, 7, 12, all 7, all 5. 5 is kind of a hard harmonic to get out. If you struggle with that one, we all do. <laughs> uh, so it's also a quarter note triplet. So ba 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 ba. The reason I don't play on beat one is beat one is a rest on this quarter note triplet passage. Rest. So make sure you're feeling that. Moving on to the next line, um, this is a classic Billy Strings line, but he's kind of um, adjusting it for this situation. Do just that much. So we're coming in off the beat. And we have, uh, in, the, in the first section of it, we have two notes that we're pulling off, and then we're playing a note on an adjacent string. So this. But every other time we get a bunch of fast notes in a row, um, it's a it's a hammer on pull off, right? Hammer on pull off, extra note, hammer on pull off, extra note. The cross picking right afterwards sounds like this. I'm barring with my index finger to try to get both of those second frets. It's a little uncomfortable. This is an interesting thing with this cross picking. It's gonna continue into the next line a little bit, but it's not really about the specific notes. I always say this when I write out these Billy Strings moments, but it's it's not about the notes. It's about this kind of like landscape and this feeling that he's creating. He's creating like a, um, like a texture rather than the individual notes. This is very much about the individual notes. But this next part, This is just like a texture, right? You could do this forever, and it's not really about the specific notes that I'm playing. Um, and I think about that when I transcribe these. I get it like kind of close, and I like try to get the picking pattern right. I try to do the texture right, but the fact remains, if I was gonna play this break, if I was gonna do it like me, my texture, you know, the specific notes might be slightly different because, because it doesn't matter. Um, I hope you carry that into your playing because that is a, a really good lesson to take is that sometimes it's really not about the specifics. It's about, you know, the feeling that you're creating. And this is a great example of that. Anyway, continuing that cross picking line into the next passage, it sounds like this. You'll notice that I, I have an, a zero written in parentheses right there. During these performances, I've actually been playing three right there. 
I'm not sure which one is correct, but like I said before, it doesn't really matter, so I'm not really worried about it. You can immediately tell when it matters, the notes that you need to play, right? As soon as I get to, you're like, oh yeah, that feels good. Like, well, what are the specifics right there? So let's talk about that. <laughs> right there, I have a big hammer-on pull-off, pull-off. Right, so uh, hammer on from my index finger to my middle finger, second fret to third fret on the G string, and then I'm pulling off all the way back to open. Three to two, two to open. And then I'm hopping down to second fret. I love it. The end of this line, we're hopping into some of that diagonal pentatonic. This is diagonal pentatonic. The next part he plays on the next line, scoot ahead, look. All of that, that's very diagonal pentatonic too. <laughs> so there's, uh, <laughs> There's there's all of our pentatonic moments where we've seen uh, we've seen some of box one when we're back by the open frets. Um, we saw box uh, four when we were up here. Remember in the very beginning, and this uh, this first part of the diagonal pentatonic, um, I got excited. I rushed past it, but this um, is part of box three. It's the other box that I showed you. Um, so now we've we've seen all of those. We've kind of seen everything that we talked about. Um, let's finish this line though. Uh, all right, so we have we have this look, and then once again we have this box one lick that is very classic Billy. We already heard it a couple lines ago. He played this. This time he's playing a lot of the same notes, but he's recontextualizing it. Right? He's he's moving things around so it feels like a new lick. It sounds like this. Of the same notes though. Think about that. So to play it, I have one note pickup and then it's all triplets. So, and triple, a triple, a triple, a one. And you'll notice this quick slide, but that two 16th note triplets in there, those I'm treating as like one uh, eighth note one eighth note of an eighth note triplet. Uh, because the those two notes, two sixteenths add up to an eighth. So it, it makes sense, I swear. Uh, so when I feel that, it's just triple, a triple, a triple, a triple, a triple, a triple, a two, and triple, a triple, a triple, a one, two, three, four. And that's it. You're done. That's the whole thing. Billy strings like straight into the Sierra Hall. <laughs> All right. Now that you're done with the breakdown, I'm gonna play the break for you, uh, and I'm gonna put the tab up ahead. This is some more salvaged found footage, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so don't don't judge me. Don't you dare judge me. <laughs> uh, remember, you can always slow the uh, the video down by hitting the settings wheel and picking a new playback speed. That is a great practice tip here on YouTube. You can do that with any video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead, enjoy this play along. You have a good time. for hanging out taking a lesson with the biggest baddest billy goat in the barnyard that's me um, definitely check out lessonswithmarcel.com if you want a free copy of this tab tons of other billy strings tabs tony rice tabs doc watson tabs brian sutton tabs trey hensley 
whoever you like, we got tabs from that person. Um, <laughs> there's also uh, Skype lessons you can sign up for. Of course, we have merch and other things. Just check it out. I promise it's worth it. Um, also, thanks to everyone that's been showing up for the live streams. Uh, we've been doing those uh, every single week, Tuesday at around noon Eastern time. If I remember correctly, this one was one from a live stream. So whoever suggested that, I'm sorry I didn't look up your name. But thank you so much for your suggestion. Um, I hope we get some more banger suggestions like this one. All right, gang. I'll see you next time. My line was running from town. That midnight train spilled her.